we are facing an obesity crisis. An obesity crisis we may not even have heard of. An obesity crisis we may not even be aware of. Obesity? What does that have to do with learning? I mean, this is a learning podcast I'm listening to. Is it? Don't you worry. You are in the right place. If you feel learning should be better, if you feel learning could be better, if you want to discover what really goes on when we learn and how we can make it better, then you are exactly in the right place. Welcome to the Hidden Secrets of Learning podcast. My name is Ruth Sanis and I've been working in learning and education for over 15 years. From day one in the classroom, I knew something was seriously wrong with our learning systems. And I set out to discover and develop better, more effective ways for adults like yourself to learn, process and assimilate knowledge. Each episode, I will be sharing with you a secret behind real learning, understanding how we actually learn, the science of learning, and the psychology of adult learning behavior. And if you're lucky, you may even get to experience some of it for yourself. So subscribe and stay tuned. Today's episode is called Knowledge and the Fat Issue. Are we becoming intellectually obese? We look at how current learning can resemble today's obesity crisis and what we can do to counteract this. It's a topic I've wanted to share for quite a while, so what better time to do so than with this pilot episode? Fasten your seatbelts, everybody. Learning is often described as a process of acquiring or gaining something, or taking something in. In most cases, information or knowledge. A consequence to gain or acquisition is to have something you didn't have before. It can be likened to something we do every single day, sometimes numerous times a day. Eating. What we may not know is that just as food needs to be first properly digested before it can actually start to feed and power the body, the same principle needs to be applied to knowledge. It is not just because we've heard something once, be it in a classroom, from a colleague, or on a podcast, that we are automatically going to be able to remember that information, let alone use it to power our lives. I remember as a kid I really used to love watching Charlie Chaplin films. One of my very favourite was Modern Times, probably a precursor to my love of technology and all things efficient. In particular, the scene with the feeding machine. If you've seen it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, when you next get a chance, look up Modern Times feeding machine scene. But as it goes, Chaplin has got himself a job working on the line in a factory, and this inventor has come up with this genius solution for efficiency, a machine that will feed the workers as they continue working. Obviously, worker protection wasn't what it is today, but anyway, we all know who drew the short straw when it comes to testing out the machine. You got it. So here's our Chaplin with his two hands on automatic, a spanner in each tightening, well, supposed to be tightening bolts along the line, when the gong rings for lunch, and in rolls this giant monstrosity of a machine, a bit like a giant Dalek. The machine may have started sweetly enough, gently tipping tomato soup into Chaplin's mouth, until it decides to pull the lot down his front, and then shove piece after bite-sized piece of precision-cut food into his open mouth, not even leaving a fraction of time for him to chew and swallow. The objective here is to feed the worker, while the reality is a machine robotically shoving food into the worker's mouth. So is the machine doing its job? Technically, yes, while in reality, no. Yes, the food is going in, but with no time for it to be chewed and swallowed, is it actually feeding the person? And inversely, if there was chewing and swallowing, mindless eating on such a scale is likely to lead to overconsumption and coupled with a lack of activity or exercise, a conversion to fat. In both situations, we are looking at a poverty in nutrition. So where does learning sit on this? Think back to the last formal learning session you attended. Did you have that same impression of information overload? Let's look at it like this for a moment. To assume learning is simply a question of taking in knowledge and information, end of story, is no different to assuming those dirty socks laying on your bedroom floor are going to walk themselves to the wash basket. Or to assuming all the grocery shopping you've just bought into the kitchen left on the floor, obviously listening to me is infinitely more interesting, 
is going to magically unpack itself and put itself in, away in perfect order. You know, and I know, it's not going to happen. The same is true in learning. If we don't process and assimilate the knowledge we are taking in, it is like a factory constantly bringing in the raw materials, but without effective processing quickly getting a backlog and blockage of unprocessed goods, or even worse, badly processed goods and unsellable final products. In plain English, we're talking about a big muddle, a lot of chaos, confusion, yet we're talking a big mess. You ever heard of arteries getting clogged? Yeah. So how do we unplug them? Let me give you a case in point. Have you ever been to a seminar or conference? And let's say it was a good one for once. Could have been a bad one too, but let's say this time it was good. You're excited. So many amazing speakers, lots of great ideas. You've taken lots of notes. I mean, your hand aches, you wrote so much down. You even went through three pens. Your motivation levels are through the roof. But you know what else? You're also exhausted. And not because you just ran a marathon. Anything but. I mean, you've been sitting on your back end all day, but for what it's worth, it could have been. You're exhausted because you just took in an epic amount of information and it is all swirling around your head in a state of confusion and backlog. Obviously, in a perfect world, we would go home, get a good night's sleep, then wake up early and spend the next three days from dawn to dusk religiously going through all those notes, playing back the secret recording you made and processing everything until you have everything organised into neat, possibly colour-coded sections. You have a clear action plan and have already done a Teach It Forward for at least five of those items you want to remember, just as the other Improve Your Mind podcasts are telling you to do. Can I breathe? <sighs> but this isn't a perfect world. The few people who still learn like that are either still in high school or hardcore university students halfway through their second PhD. No, this is us. So this is where I bring in an element of psychology. Psychology of adult learning behaviour. Going to these types of events, even training days, can be like going to an all-you-can-eat buffet full of amazing food, which in itself is fine. I mean, it's all-you-can-eat buffet. Everything we dream of as poor, broke students. The problem comes in you thinking you have to eat everything. The real problem comes in you feeling bad because you can't fit it all in, in feeling you are not good enough because you can't squeeze in another dim sum. How about a carrot stick? It may sound crazy and over the top, but that is exactly what every single person feels in a learning context. I must be stupid because I can't remember everything. Oh, well, I, I never was very good in school anyway. Can you see where this is leading? Obviously, no Buffy owner in their right mind is going to expect you to eat everything. And to feel bad about that? That it dented your worth? Yeah. So why impose such a feeling on ourselves when we are learning? And you know what else? Trying to stuff it all in, like trying to put more clothes into what is probably already an overstuffed wardrobe, will only lead to what I'd like to call mental obesity. That obesity crisis I was talking about at the outset. No wonder we feel mentally confused and muddled and sluggish and tired. So here's my learning advice for today. You just need to remember one thing. And I literally mean one thing. The next time you are being flooded with information, in a learning context or other, let off the pressure of expecting yourself to remember everything. Rather, choose one thing you want to take away with you. One thing you want to look into more closely and find out more about. One thing you want to put into effect in your life. One thing you want to share with someone else. Just one thing. One thing done right. Have one piece of cake. Savour it. Enjoy it. Remember it. Talk about it. Even go and make one yourself. Believe me, if you choose right, you won't even want that second piece and your thighs and mental clarity will be thanking you for it. Want to learn more secrets behind real learning? Stay tuned. 
Next time we will be looking at the mystery of motivation and I will be taking you on a journey through the world of compulsive behaviour and which elements we can harness to power our projects day after day. For more information about the science of learning or to get in touch about collaboration on your learning projects, go to www.ruthsanis.co. That's www.ruthsanis.co. To receive behind the scenes updates and join the daily discussion, follow me on Instagram at ruthsanis.co.